Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of couch potatoes in love that love reacting to some Castlevania. We do. And uh, this is it. Season four, episode yeah. 10, the finale. So let's see Belmont's fate and uh, the rest of our heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Super happy fun times ahead. Yeah. Huh. Hector. And Lenore? Although. Yeah. Oh, it's all over, Hector. It's really not. Things just changed. That's all. Vampires aren't big on change. Oh, someone should have told Camilla then. <laughs> oh, shush with your trying to be clever. People spend 60 years bumping into things and call it a life. We have to take a longer view, so we want stability. And you're saying you had that? We did. To an extent, yeah. Small shapes are stronger than big ones. Look, Carmilla wanted more than a weatherproof shelter. In the end, but it all came from that... Strength and power are different. You wanted strength, Carmilla wanted power. Mm-hmm. Parasite you have to feed. Power does nothing but eat. Like a vampire. Hmm. Hmm. Here I sit, in a cage. Dangerous animal, with King Isaac, a happy bastard. <laughs> Keeping a very watchful eye on me. I've never known him so fucking cheerful. It's bizarre. Hmm. Whatever comes next, but I refuse to exist like this. Did you kill yourself? And I want to see what's so special about this son you keep talking about. Oh my god. No, don't. Hector, it's fine. It's what I want to do. Be free, Lenore. What will you do? I think I'm going to write a book. <laughs> know the mistakes we made. And recently I've been caused to know the value and the beauty of things that live longer than I do. Really? This is it? Okay. Kind of told her sunsets were better. I guess it was quick. Yeah. Like sometimes when they show vampires getting hit by sun, it's mm -hmm. slow and they writhe. And his eyes are also beautiful. <laughs> so what do you think about my plan? It was my plan. You just think it was your plan. It was my plan. I let you think it was your plan. Which was my plan. I told you my plan in a way that would make you think it was your idea. It was my bloody idea. <laughs> Admit it, you're outmatched. They bicker like a married couple. Mm -hmm. It was all my idea. <laughs> you just go on thinking that. So you agree then? Agree to what? My plan. We're going to stay. Oh my god. <laughs> Ignoring for a moment that you are considerably more insane than I have previously estimated. <laughs> Good idea. I mean, I'm not used to people. They're used to you. True. Then be used to you, and you'll get used to them. I think I felt part of my brain die just trying to follow that logic. <laughs> I'm not human. I mean, not completely. Don't think I haven't noticed you playing with the orphan kids. And don't think I don't know. Some of them have been calling you father. Oh. By saying anything. Very human of you. You, Alucard, are a very odd person. Yeah. I think I might like you. Yeah, you do. Good. Happy ending for him. Yeah. He deserves it. Alucard, she's up. Oh no, does she not know? Please don't tell me that he has to tell her. Be gentle. No, she, she hasn't knows. talked to anyone in two weeks now. Yeah. Okay. Let's say she saw the whole thing go down. I am going to do what Trevor and I originally planned to do. Rejoin my caravan. You know you are very welcome here. Thank you. But I am also very definitely pregnant. <gasps> my people. Oh my god. And my people are well practiced in giving the support a woman needs when it's time. If I could just get a horse. I, um, congratulations. Say it like the way you said it to Trevor. Should I not be congratulating? Congratulations. I've heard worse impressions. Hmm. It's fine. You should stay. That's very kind of you. But I should be around more people. I can't let you be the one person I rely on for help. And a child should have a community. They will hear. If you stay. Don't understand. These people aren't going back to Dennis. They're going to find a new village here around the castle and the hall. 
We could change everything here. We're going to have school, one of which will be all about the libraries of the castle and the hall. And I was hoping you could help me teach this brilliant but actually fairly useless man how to live his life. <laughs> Cypher, we have a real chance to make life better for our children than it was for us. For once, it could be better. Do you want her to stay at the place, though, where her lover died? <sighs> She's good. I know. You're in real trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are you going to call the village? New Dynasty? I thought we might call it Belmont. That should confuse everybody. <laughs> I think I'd like to live in a place called Belmont. Mm. Also, my god, these people bad at organization. Hmm. It's back and forth from the river all day. I thought you were a man of science. Elaine's going to need widening over there too. I just want to push that strand of hair out of her face. Hmm. Walking down the lane. Tie your horses up, Aluka. You're founding a village. You need to sort these things out. I know that horse. Someone's on it. <gasps> what? Yes. I don't know how, but yes. Oh, love. <laughs> oh. Wh wh what? All the questions you answer now. Hmm. A second later, I was inside the corridor. And the next thing I knew, I was lying on my face by the north bank of the Danube. Well, I'll be damned. Huh. We need some help over here right now. Sensu Bean. I'll be okay. I just need about a year sleep in a new body. Oh, <laughs> what about you? Is everything all right? Oh, I'm fine. Just got a surprise for you. Mm hmm. You know what scared me? You might end up calling the kid Trefor after all. Oh, he knew. How did you even know? Please. This is me. How do you think I've managed to stay single and carefree all these years? <laughs> <laughs> Please come over here and kill this man. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> idiot Trevor Belmont. Yep. I know. And he's your idiot. And I love you. Mm-hmm. I know. Hmm. I said this man needs help. Hello, Belmont. Hmm. Taking things out of there is good luck charms. I started noticing things. Ended up collecting the pieces. Something a mad wizard blacksmith once made to enact a very one-sided murder-suicide pact with God. You knew the thing was probably lethal to you when you used it. Didn't say much of a choice. What are all these people doing here? Welcome to my village. <clears throat> you have a village now. What's it called? Treffy. <laughs> Someone please come over here and kill me. <laughs> You look weirdly happy. Hmm. I for the first time. The funny thing is, for the first time in my life, I have absolutely no idea what happens next. I just have this feeling that it's going to be worth it. I'm weirdly happy. I think so. I think we finally won. Good. Did not see that coming. No. <laughs> Thing is, would they seek out Alucard? What happens when his wife dies of old age? Maybe he'll bite her and she won't. You need to get used to calling yourself Vlad. I, I can't be introducing you as Acula Tepesh. Honestly, no relation. Don't look too closely at his teeth. <laughs> to talk about i died and you weren't there and you died and you came to find me mm -hmm. and you seem a little angry 
because none of this makes any sense. Do you have a theory about what happened? What makes you think I have a theory? You're a man. Men always have... <laughs> <laughs> Crazy theories. You didn't feel bad about picking that headman's pocket this afternoon. Well, he was a pig. <laughs> but we should do something for the people we took these clothes from tomorrow. Aw. After that. We can't return to the castle. Poor boy deserves some closure in his life. Good. Perhaps one day in the future. But not yet. Definitely not yet. He just found happiness. I have a thought. Hmm. Not a theory. Not a theory. Just a thought. I think we should travel. Where to? I was thinking about England. There's a place on the northeast coast that is supposed to be beautiful. And they say the sun barely shines there. Remote and lonely, I presume. An abbey, men and women, and about 20 houses, I've read. Sea views, fish. Fish? How can I resist? I'm not going to get better without you. And I was never going to be better without you. We have a second chance. And a brand new future. Nice. Mm hmm. Hmm. Nice satisfying end for um, the main crew. And then see, that was a nice uh, surprise ending for Dracula and his wife. That was so much better than I anticipated because of the fact of how the penultimate episode ended. Yeah. And um, a lot of our community had mentioned how, like, basically how emotional the last episode was. And it was, but, like, I heard that in the, in the sort of, like, framing in mm -hmm. my mind of, Belmont's dead. Ready to cry. Yeah. I'm an ugly cry. This is gonna suck. <laughs> Not as in it's gonna be a bad episode, but just as in like I'm gonna feel like crap because yeah. it's gonna make me cry. Um, but I didn't. I I think I've like gotten so cynical with so much modern entertainment being like, oh, you think you're happy? Now we're gonna rip out your heart and kill the yeah. main character. That I didn't necessarily believe even like until they started to roll the end credits that we really could get our happy mm -hmm. ending for all of our characters. And I am so thankful and so happy that we did. Um, I also have to say, I think Alucard gave one of the best descriptions of love that I've ever heard. Really? Yeah. And it, he said, he's like, for the first time, I don't know what's coming next, but I know that it'll be worth it. <laughs> and I think... You know, you go through your life and you don't know what's going to come next. Like, that's that's a given. Mm -hmm. But I think when you find something that really sets your heart on fire, whether that's the person that you love or, like, kind of like your calling in life, whatever, whatever that purpose is, whatever that means, it suddenly changes life from just, like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe you're approaching it with optimism. Maybe you're approaching it with anxiety. Whatever it might be. It's sort of like this void and then you find that thing and it's like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It might be a good day. It might be a bad day. I don't know. But I know it's going to be okay because mm -hmm. like all the tomorrows are now worth it. Um, so I just, I don't know. I just, it really resonated with me. I love the way that he said that. I will say like out of all the characters, I felt like. Lenore, like they kind of just like sandwich them in here and be like, like, oh crap, we gotta wrap this up. How are we gonna wrap this up? Uh, I don't know, Lenore's just gonna like, you know, go out and be like, peace, I'm out. Um, but she had kind of lost her way with Carmilla and uh, felt like, you know, her, she didn't have a, a purpose anymore because she like, her purpose was diplomacy and she's like, okay, well, how do I fit in this new, this new world that we're, we're trying to create that's just gonna be like about war and like, you know, conquering and everything like that. And then here's a chance for diplomacy and trying to talk to Isaac and, um, you know, get her freedom. And she's like, no, I'm just not, I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just gonna, you know, go kill myself. Like, it, I don't know. It just, it just felt like they didn't know where, where, where they wanted to take this character and where they wanted to go. And they painted themselves in a corner. They're like, well, it feels a little, like we can't have everybody have a happy ending. And we can't have everybody end up together that like, you know, like, uh, and so we gotta kill somebody. So I guess like, you know, we'll just do the Lenore and, uh, and like not have Lenore and Hector like live happily ever after like in in retirement. Um, which I'm like you said like I'm not sure Lenore would have liked that anyways because how do you uh, grapple with the the fact that you know Hector played a part in killing someone that you uh, cared for uh, in Carmilla? 
even though it was a complicated relationship, her character wrapping it up, that was the one thing that like, I wasn't totally satisfied with. And I think you're right. Like, whereas in like a lot of, I don't know if it's art reflecting life or, you know, where we're just have reached that cynical point where like, oh no, happy ending. Like life's not, it doesn't have happy endings or whatever. So we don't want happy endings in our, in our shows and in our movies and everything. And so it's, um, yeah, so you don't don't see a lot. It's like kind of like the media ending. It's like, oh, you know, like some people get a happy ending, but there's still like, you know, one of our main characters, whatever, dies. Every, and so not, it's not like a total happy ending. But this one, I really liked it because for the most part, yeah, it was like, you know, like a happy ending for like definitely our main characters, our three main characters. Um, and then Dracula and his wife, which they didn't have to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that they that they did. And yeah, it's like, it's it, it was nice. It was nice seeing that. I think with Lenore, it just hit me differently mm -hmm. but in part i think that's because maybe i'm thinking s slightly less of her character mm. while also admiring her in a very weird way <laughs> um i know that's contradictory so i'm gonna explain it the whole idea that hector and lenore were ever going to live happily ever after was a fantasy and it was yeah it was well laid out because it was putting us potentially in hector's shoes mm. you know he what is it M not is it Machhausen when you fall in love with your captor or Stockholm syndrome? Or Stockholm syndrome. It's Stockholm. Um, you know, we had a bit of Stockholm syndrome where he was falling for Lenore, but also there was no question about the power dynamic in that relationship. There was no question about who was in control of everything at every moment because that was Lenore. She had the ability to at any moment pull the plug mm. and kill Hector if she wanted to. Part of Hector's relationship with her was making her happy and him of value to mm -hmm. her, which is not the start of a healthy relationship. Um, so, you know, out here, they kind of paint this picture that maybe the two of them could find some happiness and we follow that, which is putting us in Hector's shoes. But at the end of the day, it's not realistic. And I think Lenore was very good at what she did mm -hmm. when she was always top dog. She always was in control. As long as she was the smartest person in the room who could manipulate those around her, she was comfortable and happy wielding her power. Isaac comes into the picture, and I think she's met her match or possibly her superior. Mm. Isaac is very smart. He is very worldly and knowledgeable, and I wouldn't call him an optimist or a pessimist. He's a realist, and he approaches the world through a very clear lens. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of Lenore, there was going to be no seducing Isaac. There was going to be no playing to Isaac's pride. Isaac is not so easily manipulated at this point. And I think Lenore recognized that this is somebody that maybe her powers wouldn't work over. Maybe she would lose to even if she tried. And I think at the end of the day, her her pride and her loss of purpose drove her to walk into the sun. And I admire that in terms of her self-awareness and, and knowing that, you know, she kind of reached the end of her rope, but at the same time, I think a little bit less of her for not trying. I just would have liked to see, like, I mean, they could have just done a scene with Isaac and, and Lenore, like, ha like have her show like a different strategy, like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, like knowing that she can't seduce him, knowing that she can't overpower or like, can't overpower him because he's got all the the night creatures, or whatever. Like he took out Carmilla, and so, like, just uh, have her show like a, a different like because she's so she like diplomacy was her skill, like a different strategy in trying to get get to Isaac, and maybe like she, you know then she realizes okay like she can't talk to Isaac, and like maybe that's all implied, and you uh, garnered more from that than than I did. Uh, but like with all the great scenes that they had with Isaac and talking with the different people, yeah, um, like especially like in, in season three and everything, it felt just. It just felt like that one, that was like out of everything else, it seemed like all the other characters had a very fitting end um, to their to their arc and like satisfying, I, I should say, as well. Um, so not just because they all got like, you know, necessarily happy endings or whatever. I mean, like Carmela didn't get a happy ending, um, but I felt like she got it like a satisfying ending. Um, you know, when I think of that scene, I just think of like, you know, I did it my way and like, you know, she, she's yep. cutting through people she and everything. And so it was just, it, it was fitting for her. Um, yeah. So just the Lenore thing was one thing like I felt like they just didn't have enough time 
to really do justice. And maybe that was like always gonna be her end, but it feels just like maybe like a, a little bit more, like, I mean, this was kind of a shorter episode anyways, that they just like, you know, there was another scene in there, um, opening it up with 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 her and, and, and Isaac and like, and having a discussion like, you know, cause it would have been nice to see Isaac one last time too. Yeah, I was a bit bummed that we, that we didn't have Isaac in this. Um, but I will say I did very much appreciate the conversation between Hector and Lenore about power versus strength. Mm-hmm. And I love how Lenore talked about how that was a parasite, like the, mm. the seeking of power, the desire for power is like a parasite. It gets inside you and it takes over. And I think to an extent she recognized that that is also what she had become or mm. allowed to infest her through Camilla's ambition and through her sisters and this quartet that they had. Um, you know, she was trying to justify it with like, oh, but our, our noble purpose, our virtue, the vampire's virtue, we just want strength and stability. Sure, mm. everyone does. Ask any person who has gone out and maybe been a bit crazy in an isolationist way or been a bit crazy in a greed way, what their motivation is. It's not to be a greedy asshole. It's to have financial stability and security for their family. And what is at mm-hmm. its heart, or at least what it's beginning, is virtuous. We all want that. We all want to protect those that we love and have a stable existence. We don't like to live in chaos. But like you get to a point of building strength and then you tip that scale into a lust for power and a lust for money. And and that is essentially where this quartet had gone. Mm -hmm. And I think also what drives Lenore to do what she does is the recognition that, oh, wow, I'm a part of the problem. She doesn't have to be that indefinitely, but I think she I think that realization of having been that Mm -hmm is also not exactly a great thing to live with. So I think there's a lot in terms of like the rug just being pulled out from under her and she's in a bit of a free fall right now. No purpose, no stability, recognizing she's been a part of the problem. Like there's not a lot of good things in Lenore's life to keep her going at this particular moment in time. Yeah. And that's just being really nit- nitpicky with uh, the whole Lenore thing uh, for me. Just being like, just because everything else was so amazing and, and satisfying Perfect. that like, you know, when one thing uh for me in particular like just wasn't wasn't that way that's the re- only reason it sticks out is because everything else was 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 great um and it's not like i mean you know yeah so uh i just thought it was a really great great show um like i said season uh, last episode was my favorite episode of the whole entire series um but the way this started out i mean just like for four episodes and they thought it wasn't going to do well and then just for it to take off like this is yeah. it was great um props to, to the writers props to the the actors they did a phenomenal job um with this and i always enjoy the fact that they took their time with this entire series um like uh, not just shoving a bunch of like action uh down our throats and like i think especially i don't know it's just like for for animation like to just to take those like s- a lot of long pauses and um, and just the silence that they had throughout this entire series is, is something that I haven't really seen. Like, I mean, you know, I, I would I keep thinking of Wally, uh, mm. where you know you don't really it's it's just there's no dialogue for the first whatever half an hour of, of that movie, um, and uh, just how beautiful that was. Um, So overall, just a a fantastic series. I'm glad I was recommended. Now, there's no chance of them doing another season for this story and this character. I know there's another Castlevania. Yeah, there's there's another Castlevania. But there's nothing else for this, these characters. No, this this seems like it wrapped it up. I can't see them uh, doing another thing for this uh, series. I mean, you you never know. I mean, I never thought they were going to make a sequel to Beetlejuice, and they 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 have. And so, um, you know, you never never say never. but yeah, as far as I know, there's no plans to to continue with this. The Castlevania Nocturne um, is completely is like still in the same universe, but just different, different following different characters, a different Belmont. And see, that's what I was gonna say that I love about this that a lot of modern TV show creators don't get, which mm. is end it when you want it to end. Yeah. Don't keep going for the sake of ratings and for the sake of more money. Mm-hmm. End it where your story ends. Don't draw it out purpose purposelessly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what they did so well with this. Like, 
yes, of course I want to see baby Belmont and baby Saifa. Of mm. course I want to see Alucard have his his love story mm-hmm. and whatnot. And of course I want to see what happens to Dracula and his wife. I should be left wanting that. <laughs> like, that's a good thing. Like, being able to sit here and kind of, like, imagine what their lives are going to be like and, like, my fantasy for them playing out. Yeah. Is deeply satisfying. Much more so than continuing it for another six seasons and beating a dead horse. Like, it it was wrapped. It was perfect. Put the little bow on it and put it on the shelf. Like, yeah. it was great. And so many shows now, it's like, oh, people like this. Let's just throw more spaghetti at the wall and hope that it sticks because they mm. like these characters. And unfortunately, that eventually winds up making us not like them and be like, oh, my God, is it over yet? Like... I've invested four seasons. Fine, I'll watch the fifth season, but like yeah, I don't I want to. Yeah, it's 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 like I feel addicted, and I need to know yeah. what happens, even though I'm done with it. Yeah. Um. So I I just I love that they did that, and I can now have my imagination for what the happy endings are for these characters. It's it's like a good sex scene. A good sex scene doesn't show you everything. It gives you enough mm-hmm. to stir your imagination, and then let your fantasy fill in the rest. Yep. And I'm just. Very happy that that is that that is what they did, and I think, you know, of course, I want to continue exploring this world. I'm excited to check out Castlevania Nocturne. I I will be eager to continue supporting the franchise, but I'm glad they put these characters to rest. And by the way, uh, Netflix is you are completely okay to use uh, the tagline for Castlevania to sell it to more people to say Castlevania. It's like a good sex scene. Um, I yes. I, yeah. I freely license it's like, that. It's, to like you. A, it's like a perfectly executed sex scene. <laughs> that's that's probably what should be the the tagline for Castlevania. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're gonna continue with Castlevania Nocturne. Not right away. We're gonna wait until uh, closer to, or maybe right when season two comes out for Castlevania Nocturne. It's all I got picked up for another season. Um, since it doesn't continue with the same story, there's no need to like rush right into it. Um, and yeah, so. Let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want to see our full watch along reactions to the show, uh, we have a link to Patreon down below in the description of this video. And thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Castlevania, which keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.